Okay, we're in Photoshop. We need to open a file. Now it says MVI. If it says MVI, I know that's directly from the camera. That's not been edited whatsoever. There it is. Now, there's lots of things to think about. It's not just about how do we edit the video. It's also how do we present the video. We're selling jewelry. And there's a psychology that goes along with that. I'm going to explain that here. First of all, I'm going to make sure, well, obviously it's rotating clockwise. Now, first I'll do this. A lot of people start their video right here. The problem with that isn't the editing. The problem with that is the psychology. Here's the money shot of the ring. And you're going to show that first. Why are they going to watch the video? You show them a photograph. But if you go, for example, to like, oh, two o'clock. Now they have to wait for this to come down to the money shot. It's called anticipation reward. You may or may not agree with that, but I'm going to explain it here for those that do agree with that. And maybe you hadn't thought about that before. I use the scissors, click in there, delete. That is the beginning of my video. Take the timeline back, see right there, it goes to the beginning. Now at the top, I you see that I have a ruler, and on the left, if you don't see the rulers, go to view, make sure rulers is checked. Okay, you have to have that ruler checked. Now I can grab the ruler and drag down a line. These are called snap lines. I just do two corners. And now I have to rotate that video one full rotation, 360 degrees, and match those lines. Okay, I went a little too far. Back it up a little bit. A little bit more. There. That looks really good. It might be a tiny bit off, but that's not something that's going to bother people. I go back to the scissors. Here's the scissors. Click, click here. Hit delete. Now I have a full singular rotation. One rotation. This is faster for rendering. It's a smaller file to upload online. Then all you have to do is put what's called a loop on it and it will continue to go around and around like it was like a really long video until the viewer decides they want to see something else. Okay, so that's really important. We now have our, our loop cycle created. For me, I don't like all that big white space around the ring. So one thing about editing a ring or a video in Photoshop is you can crop the video. You really can't do with anything else other than DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve is super, super powerful. And, and, and we have tutorials for that, but this is for Photoshop. So now I'm going to turn this ring like so. And I'm going to take another line and leave a margin right here to the back. And then I'll turn the ring 180 degrees. And what I want to make sure of, my stone did not go out here, but this went out. Create about the same, eyeball the margin. Now I'm going to take the ring to where it is at 12 o'clock, meaning the stone is at midnight or noon, high noon. And uh, now I can set my top and my bottom. And I make sure, I go all the way back, that it doesn't jump out. And it doesn't. Now I can crop it. On the left, crop tool. See how it changed color? And put up these handles right here. And I take them over to the snap line. Snap. 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 And snap. And now I just hit the enter key. 
Now it's not square, but that squaring is the next step. Go up to image, canvas size, not image size, canvas size. Change to pixels. So it's biggest number, in this case is the width, but the biggest number. Command C, copy, over the top of the smaller number, Command V, say OK. Now we see that we have a uh, checkerboard. And uh, so what I do, select the selector here. We're on our layer here. Down below we have a plus sign next to garbage can. Hit the plus sign. Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do instead. First we'll go here, add a video group. This one has to be on top. Now we'll hit the plus sign. And then we'll bring it down. And then we'll stretch it out so they're the same size. And uh, I'm going to give this a name. WBG means white background. If that's what I'm doing, WBG. So I know that that's different than my other video group here. Now I'll click on the WBG layer, which is right here. And I'll go to the paint bucket which might be hiding under the gradient tool. Okay, I want the paint bucket. Maybe you don't see that. Maybe you see this. So now you gotta click on that to get to the paint bucket. I need white. I wanna make sure it's white, white. This is white, white. Here's your color palette right here. You know, with, the, with the square. Choose white, white. Now, click. What we notice is that uh, our white background isn't so pure white. And so this takes us to the next step, which is creating the adjustment layers. And at the same time, uh, well, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm going to, uh, Go here, and I'm gonna do three, three things. I'm gonna click right here, right here, which is level, and right here in saturation, so that we see we have exposure at first, level second, here in saturation third, counting from the bottom up, okay, not the top down. All right. Levels we'll probably do a couple of times, but we need to see what things are looking like. In the levels, we have a uh, white eyedropper right here. Upper right-hand corner. Somewhere in that position, click. And then we take this little guy here. See this empty space? Call that like the lake or the ocean. And see where it starts to get black line? We call that the shore. I call this a boat. Row the boat ashore. So, and we see a really good contrast there. Now we go to exposure. Exposure, we work with the offset. We go minus 0 0.0. And this is going to be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. If we go 0 0.01, we don't see much of a difference. If we go 0 0.08, we see a lot of difference. And we also see what it did to our background again. Yeah, so let's let's keep it at 0.08 in this case. Go back to levels, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, duplicate that. Oops, not duplicate that. That's a command J, command J, and uh, in this top one, we're gonna take away that boat, put it back over here. We're gonna go to the eyedropper again and click. Right? Now we have a really bright ring uh, with a white background. 
But we also see that we brought out the tarnish that is in the ring. Let me uh, show you that. Yellow. There's actually yellow in there, or it wouldn't be looking yellow. That's the beginnings of tarnish. You have two choices. Polish the ring, get the tarnish off, or take the easy way. Human saturation. You don't always use it, but in this case, I'm going to use it. We go to master. I have a problem with yellow. I select yellow. And I desaturate. In this case, it's like minus 70. Anywhere between minus 50 and minus 70. Something like that. Uh, it, it, minus. Minus. There we go. And uh, I still like minus 70 myself. I, I just don't like the yellow. Now the yellow is out. And we have a pretty good looking ring. Right? Look at that. Look pretty good. That is, let's make it a little smaller so we can see things. What we don't have here is sharpening. So I'm going to blow it up to 100% right here. 100%. Not more than, not less than. 100% hundred percent right here and you can type it in if you need to I have to make sure that I'm on the video layer right not the adjustment layer the video layer which you can see has a little film strip in that and you can see the ring in there now I'm gonna go to filter up on the top filter sharpen unsharp now now you see I have here in the amount 150 and the radius of 2. I don't change the radius. 100. Yeah, it looks good. And, and a lot of times, you know, see without it, if I go 200, which is the most I would ever, ever do, it just seems like too much to me. So how about 150? I like that. Now look, you may like 200, you may like 100. That's okay, let's do a preview. Right here, preview. You can see what you're getting. Say okay. There we have it. That is ready to go. So, we want to take photographs out of this. Okay, now, there is a way to create an access script for this. But what I'm going to do first. Oops, come on. Don't be, don't be a bad guy. This is the money shot. I call it 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, like down here. 12 o'clock up here. 3 o'clock over there. 9 o'clock over there. All right. I, I like this as a photo. Watch what I do. Go down to the line here. Pull this guy over. Pull this guy over. Down the lower left is a little cute arrow. If you don't know it's there, you won't see it. Now, that is the rendering. We need to make a photograph. Okay. By default, usually it's going to be right here. Adobe Media Encoder, which you'll see MP4 right here. That means it's a video. We don't want a video, we want a photo. So, we go to Photoshop Image Sequence, and now you see it's gonna save it as a JPEG. All right? And if we look at the work area, it says 81 to 81, one single frame. And we just want one frame. That's why we put these little brackets right here. We're just gonna capture a single frame as a photo. Now, choose where you want this to go. And you have other choices. You can save it as a Photoshop file, which, you know, if you want to make a poster later, do more editing is a good idea. You can save it as a TIFF also. Uh, but I'm just going to save it as a JPEG for now. You have, you have the choices, what I'm telling you. The size. Uh, we can make it whatever size we like. 
as long as it's square. I'm going to keep it the way that it is. I have to give it a name. Now, you're doing product. Every product has an SKU number. SKU. And so you put your SKU number. And then here, I'm going to put the orientation of the ring, which is at 6 o'clock. I'm going to go render. I happen to like 730. I think it tells a better story than 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock or whatever. And I'm going to repeat this. It already has the image sequence. I just changed the name here. Remember your SKU number. And in this case, we're at 730. And we can go to 9 o'clock. If you like that, we can go to 12 o'clock. If you like that. And we can go to that. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to choose. I like 430. Whatever way I want it. And I'm going to do the same thing. Change the name. SKU number. Dash 430. And this way I know how to find which photo I'm looking for. I know I'm looking for this SKU number product. Which photo do I want? I know what 430 means. I know what 6 o'clock means. I know what 730 means. 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, midnight. Those are basically it. Those six choices. Render it. What do the photos look like? Hmm. I think hmm. two o'clock. There's two o'clock. The next one, four thirty. The next one, six o'clock. The next one, seven thirty. Let's blow it up. The word's really big. Uh, it doesn't let me shift. It doesn't let me move around. It didn't fall apart. It's not a smartphone photograph. There's no way you're going to look at a smartphone photograph this close. Now, obviously, it looks like I have a hair stuck in the ring. Uh, that needs reshooting. This is a tutorial, so I'm not going to knock myself out. But if I was going to put this online to sell this ring, I would definitely clean it up and shoot it again. Okay? Because, yeah, you know, it doesn't look great. Okay, now I want to render the video. To do that, I have to take these little guys and move them left and right. And I'm gonna take this guy, put him back to the beginning. Go back to the render arrow. But now we want the video. So we have to change this back to the video. And we'll say, you see, it goes from JPEG to MP4. Awesome, what do I name the video? Well, it's a 360 video. And there is an SKU. And I'm just going to call this 360. There is no 360 in time. It's 360 degrees. And we're going to say here, high quality. Here, I can, as long as it's the same number, what if I want this to be smaller? Whatever size I want it. Or maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger. 2160. Tab. 2160, whatever number I want here, but they must be the same because it's a square video. Render. The rendering is complete. Let's look for the video. There's SKU 360. Remember, that's what we named it. So I will click on that, hit the space bar, and preview it. Let's blow it up and really see it. Now that should sell the video. The video should sell the ring, I mean. So I'll play it again. And let's remember that we have matching photos. I mean, these photos exactly match the color, the lighting, the everything. The, they perfectly match the video. And there's no other way to do that, actually. 
than by shooting the video first and then extracting the photo to get a perfect match. If you shoot a photo separately from a video, videos use line resolution, photos use pixels, and you will have to do color corrections and all kinds of crazy work to make them look like they belong together. So that is how we do all of that. And uh, the next thing, you know, we'll get into doing action scripts where you don't have to do every step. We create what's called an action script in Photoshop. And you press one button and it does multiple steps for you because we know that are going to be the same, the same steps over and over and over again. So uh, if you're looking for the action script tutorial and check that out. Okie dokie.